Hi there. Um, this is the first of three videos that we're going to use to try and break down the complexities of the skull. Because the skull can be very confusing when uh, you're first introduced to it, because the you know other bones are fairly straightforward. They have a diaphysis and metaphysis and a couple of bits and pieces here and there. But the skull is a complex fusion of a lot of very difficult to understand bones. So we'll start off looking at uh, looking at it surface by surface from the you know from the top view from the back from the side and then gradually we'll get to the undersurface and, and the inside to show you uh, where structures are passing through uh, to go to the rest of the body so with that being the case we'll come in a little bit here and we'll start looking at the top surface okay and this is probably the uh, most straightforward surface to start with okay so what we have here at the front is naturally uh, called the frontal bone okay that's this huge bone here Behind it are these two bones here called the parietal bones. If we just basically swing to the back, we've got this occipital bone. Okay, so these are our bones covering the uh, the top of the skull and going towards the back, and they're fused together as suture lines. Now this one here, this is called the coronal suture. And if you imagine that this is straightforward, coronal section is just like that. So it's a very logical name to call this the coronal suture. And it meets this one here, the midline sagittal suture at a point called the bregma. In the fetus, this still hasn't, and the young, um, the young child, the young baby, um, this still, these bones haven't fused together yet, so there's a, a soft membranous open which is called the anterior fontanelle, and it's only when they close up that this gets called the bregma. Now if we go back to the posterior view, the midline sagittal suture meets this one here, the lambdoid suture, at a position called the lambda, which is based on the letter, um, and the, uh, the Greek lambda. Um, so, that's the, uh, so that's that suture, and again, this one also is not fused fully at uh, birth, and so uh, this forms the, uh, this is called the posterior fontanelle, until it fuses up fully. Now, if we stay here at the back, there's a couple of important points. Now, this here, I don't know if you can see it quite so clearly on this particular example, but uh, sometimes these are extremely prominent, and you can certainly feel them at the back of your head. This is called the external occipital protuberance, okay? And flanking it, or reaching out laterally, is what's called the superior nuchal line. And underneath it is, uh, again, it's a bit unclear on this one, but underneath it there is another line called the inferior nuchal line. Now, what I'll do is I'll put up a... Uh, a slide uh, just on the screen here so that you can see why I'm pointing that out. So, um, this image, uh, these two images, show uh, a few ligaments and muscles of the back, and this is basically how the, uh, the muscles of the back join to the back of the skull. Okay? This here is the uh, ligamentum nuchae, uh, and, uh, and it's a very, very broad, thick, uh, thick ligament. Uh, which is continuous with uh, what's called the supraspinous ligament, holding, uh, one of the ligaments holding the spine together, and it um, attaches at the external occipital protuberance. So that's why you get this pull, this sort of like this, uh, this protuberance forming, because it pulls on the bone over the course of your whole lifetime. So we'll go back to the skull here, and that takes us nicely um, through the uh, major features of the su of the superior surface and the posterior surface of the skull. So we're moving on now, and we're going to the lateral surface, and there's a few different things going on here. There's a few features that we'll come to in a moment, but what we'll do first is we'll just point out the bones. So I'll just move myself in a better position where I can see what I'm doing. So what we have here is this bone here, which is reaching over from here. It's got processes going that way, that way, and that way. This is the zygomatic bone. Okay, This is the zygoma. All right, And it's forming part of the zygomatic arch. Now this here, this bone here is the temporal bone, okay, and it's got, it's an interesting bone itself, and I'll show you a picture of it in a moment, but this is the squamous part, the flat part of the temporal bone, which is fusing with the parietal bone here at the squamous suture, and it reaches round here to meet the zygoma at the zygomaticotemporal suture, you can see it there. Now this here is therefore called the zygomatic arch, and we'll come to this area in a moment. What we also see is this area here. This is called the sphenoid bone. Now again, the sphenoid bone is another bone that is often very difficult to understand, and I'll show you another picture of an individual sphenoid bone so you can understand that shortly. Okay, so that's the sphenoid bone. Uh, we saw before that this is the frontal bone across here, 
This is coming down from over across here. These are the prior tail bones. And then we've got some interesting features going on. So we'll start coming to them in a second. So we have here, I mentioned the zygomatic bone. We've got a frontal process of the zygomatic bone and a zygomatic process of the frontal bone. The two of them meet at the zygomatico-frontal suture. I mentioned before that we have this, these, uh, this zygomatico-temporal suture. And um, these areas... Uh, are weak points. So if a quite frequently um, uh, maxillofacial surgeons will find that, uh, that if somebody takes a blow to the head that these areas are frequent fracture points. Now another area that you really want to be aware of is this area here and this is called the terion. Okay? The terion. And you can see it's the meeting points between a few different bones. Okay? This is the frontal bone here, the sphenoid bone here, the temporal bone here and the parietal bone here. And the reason why we talk about the terion is because, again, another, player, another significant portion of anatomy here is that it's, the, it's one of the weak points in the skull, and people frequently take a blow here. If they do, this area can fracture, but the reason why this is particularly relevant compared to all other areas is that straight deep to it, right on the other side of the skull, is a very important artery, which is called the middle meningeal artery, um, which, uh, which you'll hear about in due course. And this can frequently be ruptured when somebody takes a blow there because of the fracture, because the bones are, are quite, um, quite sharp. And it's, this can cause a bleed which gradually compresses on the brain uh, and causes somebody to, uh, to uh, lapse in consciousness. So, a couple of little clinical snippets for you there. Now, we'll come to the mandible properly in a short while, but that's the mandible there, the jawbone. Okay? And there's a couple of other features that I'd like you to take note of. Here across here, we've got this huge process here, okay? This is called the mastoid process. And it's an absolutely massive projection, which is attaching um, the sternocleidomastoid uh, muscle, which is which if you turn your head to uh, either direction, you'll see it actually very clearly um, being defined. Uh, and it attaches to the sternum and the uh, clavicle, sternoclido, uh, at its inferior borders. They fuse and they come up to the, here uh, to the mastoid process. So that's the sternocleidomastoid. And I don't know if you can just see in there, just a little bit deep, we'll see it later on the inferior surface, but this is the styloid process here. And there's a foramen here called the stylomastoid foramen, but we'll come to that in a short while. This here, between them, is the external auditory meatus, which is part of your, um, your uh, auditory system. And uh, the only other uh, areas of the lateral portion of the skull that I want to point out to you are a couple of spaces, really. Right? Now, we mentioned the temporal bone here, the squamous temporal bone. You can't see it very, very clearly on this, uh, on this skull. Unfortunately, this is one of the issues that we have when we're trying to demonstrate is that some, uh, some uh, models and some specimens are a little bit variable in terms of how they're formed. But what you can sometimes see very clearly are a superior and an inferior uh, uh, temporal line. And what attaches to them is that the inferior one, there's a muscle called temporalis, I'll show you a diagram in a moment, which heads down here, attaches onto the jawbone, and it elevates the jaw. Okay, So it's a muscle of mastication. And its fascia that covers it attaches to the superior temporal line. The reason why that's relevant is because this forms an area called the temporal fossa. And down here, as we get below the zygomatic arch, we go into the infratemporal fossa. Now, the infratemporal fossa is bound... Um, by a few different bones. So the infratemporal fossa has um, uh, it's here, and you can see that it comes, um, the, the lateral surface of it is the mandible itself. Okay? So that's the, uh, the lateral surface. And if you can see straight in front of it, we have the, uh, the maxilla. Okay? Sorry, are you, uh, are you able to hear, uh, see that? Is that a little bit better? Can you see that properly? A bit more like that? Yeah. Sorry about that, just trying to get an angle for you. So, what I was saying is that we have a lateral surface here, which is the mandible. We have the anterior surface here, which is the maxilla. Okay. Um, we have medial. We have at the front bit, I wonder if I can actually see this myself now. We have the lateral pterygoid plate. Can you see that? That's the lateral pterygoid plate. And that's, that's the anterior medial portion of it. But if you were to go back, you can see there's just a space there. That's where the pharynx lies and the, and the uh, soft palate. Okay. The roof of this space 
is the sphenoid bone that we met before. That's the sphenoid bone there. So that's basically this space here, and we'll come back to it in a short while because what you'll find is that there's a lot of the muscles of mastication here. Now what I'm also going to do is there is actually a more refined phase of space, and I apologize that uh, I'm taking a couple of seconds to try and demonstrate this properly because they're quite awkward to see. But if I take the mandible off there, what we have is this one here. Now, can you see that properly? Yeah? Now what that is, is a little space called the pterygopalatine fossa. Okay? And the pterygopalatine fossa, again, is bordered anteriorly by the maxilla. Posteriorly, this plate here is called the lateral pterygoid plate, and it's a downward extension of the sphenoid bone. Okay? So posteriorly, we have the uh, sphenoid bone. And if we go deep, 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 there's a bone which you probably can't see from here called the peltine bone, but if I turn this over, this bone right at the back here is a very strange bone which you probably can't see too clearly, but this is called the peltine bone, which actually extends up here, okay, and deep in there, that's the medial, um, that's the medial wall, okay. So these are the areas of the lateral surface of the skull that I would like you to, uh, to have an idea of, okay. So that covers that. Now, like I say, we'll come back to the mandible in just two seconds. We'll also come to the anterior surface of the face. But what I want to show you just before we do that is I'd just like to show you a couple of quick slides of relevant bones here. Yeah. So I mentioned before the temporal bone. I said it's a slightly odd-shaped bone. So this is the this here um, is the squamous temporal bone that we met a moment ago. And if you look across here, what we have is the uh, this is you looking at just the temporal bone. It's got the squamous flat part with a projection, the zygomatic process, which is this bit here, okay? But if you look on the inside, okay, so we're actually now looking that way, right? so as if you've opened up the skull, you're looking inside. This is the squamous bit here. This doesn't come out so clearly, but you will see this very clearly when we look at the inside of the skull. This here is the what we call the petrous part of the temporal bone, and it's holding in it all of your auditory canal, and the external auditory meatus is just there, if you can see it there, right? So that's the temporal bone, and the other bone that I want to show you is this one, the sphenoid, which is this very strangely shaped bone. I'm actually going to take off the uh, top of the skull. Again, you won't see this very clearly right now, but when we look at the inside of the skull, I'll show you it properly. But we saw it just across here, which is actually just this bit down here, right? Look, looking from there. But in fact, this bone is massive, okay? It's a massive, massive bone, and in fact, it's actually spreading across this entire section of the skull there. Now, we will come straight back to this in a short while, okay? And we'll see it properly. But it's this whole area across here. In fact, actually, if you can see it there, we've got this wing. Okay, so all of this coming across here, this is all the sphenoid bone, okay? And the other uh, slide that I want to show you is just these images showing you I know it wasn't very clear on here, but the superior and inferior temporal lines. So this is the superior temporal line with the temporalis fascia, okay, covering the temporalis muscle, which actually extends down through the infratemporal fossa and elevates the jaw when it contracts. Okay? And this here is just a, a demonstration showing you where the infratemporal fossa lies. It's not this bit coming out here, it's the bit that's going down here to the inside of the mandible. So that's a, uh, just a couple of diagrams, which are quite useful. And before we actually finish off this section, we'll, uh, we'll finish off looking at the anterior surface of the skull and the mandible.